In this video we're gonna build an accordion element that you can click to open and close and it's also responsive if you modify the width. So to start we're gonna have to create the headlines so I'm gonna press T to select a text tool and then say headline. We're gonna again use Avenir, Avenir next actually and then I'm gonna use the frame tool to create a placeholder for, for the arrow icon that we're gonna create later. Let's say it's gonna have 30 pixels. I'm gonna name this icon placeholder and we wanna make the headline a bit bigger. Let's say 18 could be appropriate I think. Maybe increase the size of the icon placeholder to 40. We can always adjust later so it doesn't really matter that much. And of course we need to also create the text contents. So I'm gonna copy this auto height. I'm gonna make sure it's the same width as both, both of these elements and then just fill in the contents. So let's say this is an accordion content. And this can just go on. The size of this is gonna be around 12 pixels. That seems appropriate. I'm gonna select these two and then press Shift A to wrap them inside an auto layout. I'm gonna name this auto layout headline and icon. And I'm gonna make sure that the headline has the width settings set to fill container. I'm gonna also set the spacing between items to zero. This should ensure that we can modify the width and that the headline is gonna react to this. So now I'm gonna take this auto layout and then this text content. At first I'm gonna set this to medium so that it's not bold. Uh, and I'm gonna select both of these two and again press Shift A to wrap this inside an auto layout. I'm gonna name this accordion. <clears throat> again I'm gonna decrease this all the way to zero. We're gonna make sure that the layout that says headline, the auto layout that says headline and icon is also set to fill container. So this ensures that when we take the whole accordion, the whole auto layout and we modify the width that the auto layout wrap inside this is actually reacting to this. We also have to set up the same for the text contents so we can fill container and now when we do this you can see that it reacts the way we intended. Right, and now we have to set basing, also set margins to 20 and add a fill as well as rounded corners. The fill is gonna be gray, dark gray, which means we're gonna set the copy to white. And I'm gonna also drink this icon placeholder it's gonna be 24 pixels. I'm gonna also add a line that's gonna divide this area. So it's gonna split the space up a bit into the part with the headline and the icon and into the part with the text contents. I'm gonna go to the pen tool and then create a line. This line is gonna be a light gray. And I'm gonna cut this. Command X and then paste it inside the accordion auto layout. I'm gonna move this and then again set this to fill container. So you can see that we, um, if I set this to fill container, it's gonna fill all the way to the edges except for the margins, the paddings that we set up. Elements inside an auto layout don't actually overlap, you know, go into padding areas. So when setting this to fill container, it takes up all of the available space but nothing more. And since there is a padding, available space means everything except the padding. If you'd like to learn more about auto layout, if you're not sure how to use this feature and you maybe want an explanation, go ahead and check out this video. It should be on the screen right now and in the description below where I explain auto layout. All right, so we will play around with the colors a bit. I'm gonna make this a little bit subtle. We're gonna also modify the colors later, so preparation. And we also wanna make sure that the distance to the top edge and the line is the same. So instead of 18, this is gonna be 20. Or if we decrease the sizes, we also decrease the spacing. I think something like this works better. Right, and now I'm gonna create the icon. So I'm gonna go to the ellipse tool by pressing O. I'm gonna create a circle that's 24 pixels. I'm gonna set the color to yellow. So it's gonna be FFF00. And then I'm gonna go to the pen tool to 
create this arrow that's going to be black and it's going to be about this big with the stroke it's going to be two pixels thick around endings maybe a bit smaller now always when setting up these dimensions for these elements um, the only thing that really matters is that it has to look good <clears throat> and especially as you get more experienced you should be able to rely on your perception you simply look at it at the element and say well this looks good this doesn't look good and uh, to get the sense of what is proportional and what is not oftentimes comes after a certain period of time you just spend looking at this stuff so I'm gonna take this icon and then I'm gonna paste it inside the icon placeholder. So inside. All right, so I'm gonna, maybe we have to take this outside. Actually, on a second thought, I'm, I'm just gonna remove this from the auto layout altogether. Right, so this, this is actually starting to look as an accordion. Right, and maybe we want to set the stroke to be yellow as well, or maybe set a gradient that's going from uh, yellow to cyan. Oops, that's the second one from yellow to cyan. I really like this combination, color combination, especially on a dark background. So we're gonna, we're gonna make this a little bit softer. We're gonna decrease the opacity to around 30. Maybe move this a little bit outside so that the yellow is more dominant. dominant. We're gonna also set the shadow of the icon to be uh, yellow as well, so that it looks as if it's glowing. And also finally, I'm gonna I'm gonna add a few gradients to the accordion background. So we're gonna go to fill here and then select the yellow color um, and then go to radial. That's gonna turn this into a gradient. Let's just exper do some experiments. I'm not sure where I'm going with this, but let's try and make this work. Radial, all right, so be something like this and make them almost invisible so let's make them very subtle right and now if we change the size of this it's gonna adjust accordingly pun not intended by the way all right let's actually set up the component i think this is good to go i think we have the basic visual outline now we're just gonna have to make this work so i'm gonna select this and then go to here to turn this in, into a component um, i'm gonna create a variant so the variant 2 is gonna say uh, actually it's gonna be open and this one is gonna be closed and just to change this from property 1 we're gonna name this property uh, state let's say i think that's more appropriate and since this is closed we're we actually, and now that, now we can see why, now we're gonna see why um, it's good to use auto layout everywhere. So if you just wanna make this, you know, look closed, you just hide these elements and now it looks closed, right? And also we have to rotate this so that it's, this icon basically says this is able to be opened and here it said this is able to be closed. I'm gonna also prepare a screen for us. So F to access the frame tool, 1000 by 600. And this is gonna be a screen. Actually, I'm gonna make this smaller. Right, and now we will, background just set it to. Now we will set up the interactivity. So let's say what needs to happen is whenever you click this, this is gonna expand and whenever you click it again, it's gonna uh, collapse. But also we don't want to, um, maybe the user will have to copy and copy and paste something from the text contents. So we don't want this to be closed accidentally, which means we will, won't be setting up the interaction to be triggered when clicking the whole element. But rather I would say, let's go for this area right that makes sense so this headline and icon auto layout so whenever this is clicked it's going to open and whenever it's clicked again it's going to close all right so i'm going to go to prototype and then what with this selected i'm going to select this and snap it here 
So on click, change to state open and the animation, which is important, is gonna be smart animate, right? Smart animate. Let's say this is gonna take 200 milliseconds. Then the same needs to be done here. Select this again, then pick and drag. On click, change to state closed. Again, smart animate, 200 milliseconds. All right, this should be, this should be finished. Now I'm gonna just prepare it for you to see how you can actually stack this up. I'm gonna take the accordion, paste it here. All right, I think this looks I mean, look at this. I think this looks awesome. The dark background with these with these gradients on on the on the uh, accordion. I mean, that I think it looks awesome. Maybe we want to make this darker. I don't know, lightly lighter. Right. I think this this is good. Okay, so you so this will be a singular accordion, but then you can also have like multiple, right? So we're gonna it's gonna be an auto layout it's like all of these. Shift A. Let's see what we created. Let's launch this prototype, fill screen. Okay, so I think this looks pretty good. I mean, check this out. If we click this area, it's gonna animate and the icon is gonna be rotating as well. So I think this looks good. And now for this second part of this. So if you click this and if you stack them inside an auto layout, you can see that it moves all of those beneath, it moves them downwards. So I think this is super cool. This really feels like an actual interface. And what is good is that if a user clicks the text, maybe let's say I want to copy something, I want to you know, select this and then press Command C and paste it elsewhere. When I click this, nothing happens, right? So um, only if we press again this area or you can press the icon directly. All right, so this has been how to create an expandable interactive accordion component. If you enjoyed this tutorial, if you found this useful, I would appreciate you leaving a like. If you're into this type of stuff, if you like creating interactive prototypes with Figma, you're in the right place. I have plenty of tutorials on my channel, so definitely go check them out. Thanks for joining me and I will see you in the next one.